All right, everybody just take a deep breath in and let it go. And be seated. <laughs> I did that for lots of reasons, one of which is I, I, I need to deep, breathe deeply to uh, focus on this sermon because really all I want to do is go baptize that gorgeous little girl. So uh, just give me a few minutes and we'll get there. I preached a few weeks ago about this practice of yoga I have taken up Tuesday nights in our hall upstairs at 7 o'clock. It has become a great place of solace and peace and joy for me and others. You don't have to be flexible, David. You don't even have to be in shape. You don't even have to do all the things the pretzel twisting instructor shows you to do. The key I finally realized on Tuesday to yoga is breathing. <coughs> Deep breathing in and out from the deepest core of your body to the top of your head and the horizon of your greatest dream and potential. I was grateful to begin my Tuesday night practicing yoga. It gave me focus for what was to come. In order to keep your balance in most of the yoga poses, you have to keep your focus on something that is not moving, on something that is solid. You will fall if you are distracted by what pose others are making or not making. And you must keep breathing. Now on Wednesday morning, I probably would have preached a very different sermon, but this, this is Sunday morning. And on a Sunday morning over 2,000 years ago, God raised Jesus from the dead. If we lose that focus, if we fail to breathe in the spirit of the resurrection and the promise of new life, we will falter. But if we endure in our pose as followers of Jesus, we keep breathing in the love of God, we will save our souls and the world. As children of the light, one of my colleagues wrote this week, God is our party and Jesus Christ is our platform. Now, we just heard a reading from Isaiah, chapter 65. We call this Third Isaiah, written in the 4th century BCE, 400 years before Jesus. It is called Third Isaiah because I hate to break your bubble, but there was more than one author of this book. If you can't deal with that this morning, call me and we'll have coffee. There are bigger things to talk about. <laughs> the people of Israel, God's chosen ones, have come back to Jerusalem after being in exile for who knows how long, but a generation, let's go with that. They had the difficult task of rebuilding their city, their home, from all of its destruction. They wanted to restore it to be that bright, gleaming city, the way it had been, its former glory. But they, of course, were scared. They were weary. Isaiah comes and proclaims this message of God, that God is doing a very new thing, something they cannot imagine. God is renewing heaven and earth, and it will be this place where there is no weeping, there is no gnashing of teeth, but only joy and gladness forever. God will be with them even when they don't ask for help. Babies will live, and they will live long lives. Yes, you'll have work to do, but you'll be building your own house. You won't be a slave to someone else building theirs. There is no oppression or slavery in this place. For in this new Jerusalem, we are all connected. Even the animals get along. The wolf and the lamb eat breakfast together, and the lions eat straw like the rest of them. On this mountain, nothing hurts or destroys, but rather life is abundant and peace. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So uh, where do we sign up? The best place I know is right here at this baptismal font. Here we are reminded that we are buried with Christ, knowing the pain of this life and raised to a new life. 
at this font over and over again. We're reminded that God's grace flows abundantly, not because we have anything to do about it, but simply because God loves us as who we are. All we have to do is receive it. This joy that Isaiah talks about is free. But be careful, my friends, because it will change your life forever. At this spot, we promise to keep on learning, to keep on taking part in fellowship with one another, in breaking bread at this table, praying for one another, praying for our enemies, praying for the least of these, for the world. We promise to keep resisting evil, and when we fall into it, we repent and come home. We keep proclaiming in what we say, and more importantly in what we do, the good news of God in Jesus. We seek to serve everyone, loving our neighbors as ourselves, and respecting the dignity of every human being. When we follow this way, we take these vows, we breathe in the breath of the good news, then we cannot help but exhale it as well, sharing it with the world. Or not, it is your choice. You may stay in your hibernation mode as long as you need to. You can keep it to yourself with a happy party of one. I suppose it is okay. God still loves you. The gift is still yours, but you're going to miss a pretty amazing celebration, and we will miss having you at the party and seeing your dance moves. It will be more fun if you come and are with us, because having you here makes a difference. Your moves make a difference. What we are doing here makes a difference in the world. I hope you know this already, but what you do, how you show up in the world on a Sunday morning, and even more importantly, on a Monday morning, it is the most important thing you can do to show that God is the party. So a few of you called or messaged me and said, uh, what do we do now? What do we do now? And my first response was, we keep making sandwiches. Some of you uh, take part in making sandwiches once a month from the Salvation Army uh, van that goes out. It was going out on Tuesday night, and we got it together on Monday to make sandwiches. And uh, someone uh, had gathered 300 and something pairs of socks that you all brought. Uh, it's, it's not a very, well, it's not the most appetizing sandwich of two white pieces of bread and some cheese and a square piece of meat. Uh, but the act of putting it together in community of the prayers we say over it and the joy and sustenance that brings to someone on a cold street with a new clean pair of socks, it makes a difference to our neighbors on the street. What else are we supposed to do? Well, so my next answer was keep planting bushes. And um, that, that makes very little sense to you, but uh, I'm just going to tell you a story about my week and testify to you how God showed up. It was nothing I did. Uh, for our guest here, I'm a horticulture major by background, and uh, several years ago, years, two and a half, I think it was, Harold and Rob, you were part of this, cutting down some big holly trees over there that were over the windows, right? Remember that? And um, so finally, it was, it was been blank for two and a half years and needed a little growth, and so uh, at the Lowe's last week, you know, they're getting ready for the Christmas trees, and so the bushes are 75% off, which is a pretty good deal. Uh, we watch our pennies around here at this church. And so uh, I bought some bushes and thought we'll get them in the ground uh, before it freezes. And so Freddie Glover, some of you may know Freddie, who is a fellow off the streets that we help. He uh, can't get a job because of his past and picks up odd jobs where he can. Uh, helps us wash dishes at the spaghetti dinner. I hope he's coming back to wash them this morning. And so it uh, turns out that Freddie uh, grew up or started working at Max Elia several years ago. And I was like, oh, I had a guy who knows how to dig holes to plant bushes. So um, we were out there planting bushes, and uh, that was fine. It was a beautiful day. And a fellow walked out the street and scratched a beard and a hat. And we spoke, as I do to my neighbors. And, and I'm wearing my t shirt and pants. And he walks on. And um, a few minutes later, he walks back and he says, uh, so uh, are you affiliated with this church? And I said, well, in fact, I am. And uh, I'm a priest here. And he took off his hat and said, oh, I'm in the same line of work. And he had his yarmulke on. 
Cool. Nice to meet you. Turns out he's a neighbor. And uh, I don't know if some of you all know, we are a Lutheran church and an Episcopal church together as one church, and we worship together, and it works. And uh, we're buying this building next door. Uh, we don't really know why, uh, except that God has told us we're supposed to do this. We're pretty clear we need to buy this building. And we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with it and how we're going to rent it. And so this uh, Jewish rabbi is standing on the front corner with me and my t-shirt and Freddie planting bushes. And he said, well, uh, would y'all entertain having a synagogue next door? I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> we would. Without a shadow of a doubt, I knew this community would laugh at God's joy and perhaps potential in that partnership. Um, so we kept talking. It turned out I had worked with his rabbi, Kofrin, officiating at an Episcopal Jewish wedding a couple of months ago, which is just a beautiful thing. And God kept shining and whatever. And uh, I said, well, let's, let's stay in touch. <laughs> and uh, he uh, walked on. And so I smiled at God. So that's pretty cool. And uh, so we got another couple of bushes planted. And um, this other fellow walks up the street. It was nice. I spoke to him. And uh, he went on up and came back by and said, uh, Good afternoon. Are you affiliated with this church? I said, well, as a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not that good. I'm not that good. And so uh, he said, well, I, I live on the other side of the street on Lake Avenue. But nice to meet you. You've been there three and a half years. I haven't met you. I'm sorry. And um, he said, well, I go to St. Ignatius down the street. He said, uh, some of the Jesuits are looking for a new office building. Would you entertain having Jesuits next door? And I said, as a matter of fact, we would. <laughs> um, so we exchanged information. I have no idea if that's going to work, but I said thank you, God, for showing up in an unexpected place when Freddie and I are out when we're out planting bushes. And uh, he turned around about 10 minutes later and said, you need some help? I like to garden. And we said, as a matter of fact, we do. <laughs> and uh, he showed me his garden and said, I've got black-eyed Susans. I'll dig them up for you. They'll look good next to those bushes. I like what you're doing at that place. And he dug them up and brought them back in yesterday. Um, I don't know, that was what I needed this week. Uh, I, I just have to tell you that what we are doing here and who we are and how we are living out whatever it is God is setting before us is making a difference. It is making a difference in our neighborhood, in our community, and in the world. God is doing something new here. God is doing something new in our world. God is doing something new in your life. I have no idea how it is that God showed up in your life this week, but I have no doubt that God did. There is capacity and hope for renewal in our world. Part of her is dressed up as a baby this morning. There is nothing and no one that God cannot recreate and renew to be a blessing for all of us. A place where even Episcopalians and Lutherans and Jewish brothers and sisters and Jesuits eat breakfast together. It can be done and is being done. It is good news. The world is dying to hear it. So we must get up and run out of here sharing that story. Keep on breathing. Endure. There is this great place here where we are welcome and sent forth. Focus on God who has not changed since the last time you were in this building, I promise. There are two pieces of bread waiting to be made into a sandwich in a bush, waiting to get out of its pot and into fertile ground. And there is a baby waiting to be baptized. So I say we sing and do it. Amen. 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 The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Riley Elizabeth Moore to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? 
I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. I do. Then let us all stand if you are able to renew our baptism. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him, in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to, him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. We look ready. Name of this child. I think it's Riley Elizabeth, Riley. but if you want to Riley Elizabeth. Riley Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Riley Elizabeth. <laughs> Riley Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and persevere, a spirit to know and love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Riley, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Would you please stand for the peace? And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also.